Welcome to the Journey Podcast. Thanks so much for taking a little bit of extra time out of your week this week to join us as we continue to learn together how hearing other stories helps us to live a better story ourselves. Prayer is a huge part of our faith. It oftentimes is the very beginning of our relationship with God. But what happens when you struggle with your faith and it doesn't feel natural? Or even so, you're starting out in your faith, and you're not sure where to begin with your prayers. Today we're joined by Noah Dockery, and we're going to talk with him a little bit about prayer and the many ways that prayer intersects with our lives. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, and welcome back to the Journey Podcast. My name is Eli, and today I am joined by just another awesome individual named Noah Dockery. He's our campus pastor, and fortunately, another uh, friend of mine on staff here at Crosspoint. Noah, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, of course. So for those of you who don't know Noah and and maybe want to understand who I'm talking here today, Noah, how about you tell us just a little bit about yourself uh, before we jump in today? Yeah. For sure. So, like you said, Noah Dockery. Um, I'm the campus pastor here at Cross Point for our campus located in Augusta. Um, I've been here for, I'm in the middle of year four right now. Um, mm. So, February of 2024 will be my four year anniversary. Yeah. Uh, and been married for a little over a year. I uh, met my wife here at Cross Point. Um, so I guess a lot of good things come out of Crosspoint, right? Listen, we've long been known as a matchmaking service as well as a yes, church. Yeah, so. absolutely. <laughs> you know. um, and so a little bit about me. I, I went to school at Moorhead State University, had no plan, no desire at all to go into ministry. Um, uh, my sophomore, junior year, all that kind of changed. Went on a trip to, to Ghana and the Lord kind of spoke to me to uh, take this next step into ministry. Um, and ever since then, just getting the ball rolling and figuring out what my next steps were. And mm. eventually I ended up here at Cross Point and the Lord's been working ever since. So, yeah. You know, it's funny. I don't, cause I had been here like eh, just around a year, mm. uh, before you had gotten here. And honestly, I don't, I, this kind of sounds bad, but I don't really remember where you came from. <laughs> like, I, like, I feel like you just kind of, one day they were like, yeah, we're looking at hiring this Noah guy. I was like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Just showed I, up. I don't really, yeah. I don't really know. Uh, but anyway, I mean, I'm glad you're here now. So that it all works out in the end for me, I guess. I'm the winner here. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it's funny though, because I, I hear a lot. It's almost like 50, 50, as far as people that I know, um, who are like, yeah, I didn't have any intent on getting into ministry. Cause I, for one, like I never had any intent on working at a church, you know, like I did, I've done music since mm-hmm. I was, you know, a teenager, but I had zero intent on working in a church. In fact, I had been burned volunteering at a church a couple times and I was like, no, I'm good. Like, I don't, I don't want to do that. So it's just funny to hear yeah. you say, Hey, I didn't have any intent. And then, you know, suddenly some event happens and you're like, Oh, I guess I'm here working at a church now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I feel like, like if you ask 90% of people who are in ministry, I feel like that's kind yeah. of their story. Like it's either yeah. they got called at like 11 years old and they're like, yeah, I'm going to be a pastor. Or I'm yep. going to be a worship leader. And I know that for sure. Or it's like, yeah, no, nah, I was good. And then I wasn't. And now yeah. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just yeah. happens in blink, blink of an eye, yeah. one sleep, you wake up and you're like, Oh, okay. So yeah. we're doing it. So that's an encouragement to all you out there who may not, think you're ever going into ministry you never know watch out it'll sneak up and exactly. get, it'll sneak up and yep. get you yep. um well thanks again so much for being here i i know kind of when we were talking about this podcast and and we highlighted it a little bit whenever i was talking to chad and we want it to kind of be twofold we want it to be obviously story oriented where we kind of hear from people's stories like we did last week with rachel and if you haven't had a chance to listen to that it's a really good example mm-hmm. of uh a teenager dealing with grief as she um, lost her father and, and, and had to navigate through life with that. So if you haven't listened to that, please go back and listen to it. She did an amazing job and was really um, grateful that she was willing to come on and talk about that. But the other side of that coin is we wanted to talk a bit about discipleship, which is so multifaceted that it's hard to really compartmentalize mm-hmm. it into one specific area. But part of why I wanted to talk to you about it is upcoming 
in a few days, actually, you're going to be doing a how to pray class, Mm -hmm. um, which can seem like a lot, but (laughs) I mean, I know whenever I first started in my faith, prayer felt like a very daunting thing for me, right? Because I think when we conceptualize God, he's so big and so grand Mm. and everything we hear about how magnificent he is and how holy he is and all of that is true and all of that is legitimate. And so it kind of collides, at least with me, it collided with my spirit of like, I need to be striving to be close to that. If Mm. I'm going to approach him, I need to be like that. Um, and so obviously the more you learn, the more you realize that's actually why he is the way he is, is to intersect with our lack of perfection. But so I know a huge theme of this class is, is getting your foot in the door, Mm -hmm. right? So to speak, that's maybe not a, the way you would say it, but for me, it's, it's about, like exactly what it says is learning how to pray and learning how to like set that groundwork for your life. What what would you say about prayer or rather what would you say is so important about having a healthy prayer life? Yeah. I, I first just want to say, cause you, you mentioned it very briefly. Um, Rachel, I, I was just able to listen to Rachel's mm. podcast like two days ago. Um, Gosh, it was awesome, yeah. right? Yeah. The the fact that a 16-year-old is willing to step up and share that mm-hmm. um, is just really cool. And everything that she's had to go through is difficult, but um, her her story is going to change lives. Yeah. And so I just love that she was willing to share that. For sure. So I just had to, had to say that really quick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with, with, with this class and um, prayer in general, like h- how do you fit prayer into a one-hour class? For right? sure. Um, this is something that for me, I have been trying to figure out a majority of my life. Mm-hmm. So how do you say, okay, I have one hour to, to consolidate all of this information into one little thing. Yeah. Um, and ultimately the, the biggest thing that I would say is a massive takeaway is like communication is, is key. Mm. Um, not, not only with God, but just with people, right? Yeah. Uh, for just example, you and I, if, mm-hmm. if we were going through something, and it's just like, man, I'm really, really mad at Eli today. Yeah. Like, I have two options there. Stay bitter yeah. or communicate yeah. with you and work through it. Yeah. Same can be said with the Lord, right? Sure. Like, we can wake up and we might be going through something. It's like, man, I'm really, really mad at God today. So we have two options. Stay bitter and not talk to him and let that relationship kind of distance itself and get weaker or take our request to him, just go to him, um, and, and just lay it all out. Uh, and ultimately that, that's going to grow any relationship, right? N- not just your relationship with God, but relationship with other people. Mm. Um, and so I think the, the biggest thing is we always have the option of to just run away or just go straight to him. Mm. And ultimately he always wants us to go straight to him. Right. Yeah. Um, and so the, the more we, we realize that, the more we realize that no matter what we have to say, no matter what is on our heart, like the Lord just wants to hear from us, that's going to lead to a stronger relationship with the Lord For rather sure. than just running away because you're too mad to talk to him. Yeah. And I think both you and I, and we've talked about this a little bit before, just as we've been chatting, we've both been on both sides of that coin, right? Yeah, absolutely. We've been on the side of the coin where we're taking our petitions to him and mm-hmm. we're taking our concerns and we've been on the side of the coin where I'm mad. Like yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. want to, you know, at, and it's not been just once. I mean, this is an ongoing mm. thing in life Absolutely. where it's, it is, you know, you love to, for life to fit in these neat little packages. Mm-hmm. Right. But, you know, I know for me and you've had, you and I have shared this, we've shared some of the same struggles and anxiety and depression mm-hmm. and some stuff like yeah. that. But I know, there's been times where I was dealing with that in the moment where the last thing I wanted to do was talk to God, but arguably yeah. that's all the more reason to say, you know what? No, I'm going to tell him exactly what I think. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. actually go to him. So what do you think is the value in being transparent mm-hmm. in our prayer yeah. as we're going to God and saying, you know what? No, like, this is not okay. What I'm feeling right now is not okay. Yeah. I'm not happy about mm-hmm. this. Yeah. What do you think the value is in that? 
Yeah, I mean, I think the value in that is um, obviously immense because I think that's when you see your faith grow in ways that you never would have thought it could. Sure. Um, I always think back, and I show this a little bit in the class, so sneak peek for anyone who <laughs> doesn't get to get to the class, right? Um, yes. I, I think that for, for me, a specific story that comes to mind is when I was at Moorhead, my, my junior year going into my senior year, I lost three family members in the span of three weeks. Mm. I felt like at this point in my life, I'm the strongest I've ever been in my faith. I'm doing everything right in prayer, right? I, I'm journaling. I, I'm following all the right acronyms. I'm doing all the right things every single day. Um, I, I'm praying for healing for, for my family members. Yet nothing, nothing seems to be going my way. And all of a sudden, I have three family members gone in the matter of three weeks. And it didn't make sense. And so I, I never forget that I feel like the the closest I've ever been to the Lord in prayer was after all three of them passed. Mm. And I, I remember just walking down the campus of Moorhead State University late at night, which don't recommend because, you know, <laughs> it's a scary world out there. Yeah. Um, I had my earbuds in listening to worship music, and I was just, I mean, I was laying it on yeah. God. I was so mad. Sure. Um, and I was just completely honest and real with him. Um, and, and that's a big part. It's actually one of my favorite parts that I get to talk about in the class. Um, this idea of keeping it real, right? Sure. I think so many times in prayer we're, we're looking for these big words to use. We're looking for the right things to say. But it's like, no, like God just wants you. It, it doesn't matter if that means you're angry. It doesn't matter if that means you're sad what whatever you need just just keep it real yeah. like don't fake it like he sure. he knows what you need he knows what you're feeling and he's so, not fragile exactly like he's not going to like be shocked at the fact that we're having emotions right. you know he made us yeah yeah and so like he wants us to just take that to him yeah like there, there's no reason to tiptoe around mm. what we're actually feeling yeah um i, I always think about the story r- right when jesus is about to get um, arrested right he, he is praying and he says god like take this cup from me like he doesn't want to do it like i think it's one of the most human times we get to see jesus in scripture because he knows that he is about to be arrested and beaten and crucified and yet he has this moment he said god i don't want to do it like please take this cup from me and he's completely real completely vulnerable but then he answers and he goes, but you know what? Your will be done. A hundred percent. Yeah. And that's, that's the hardest part of prayer. You can yeah. be angry. You can take all re- your requests to him and everything. But ultimately we have to come back to this place of, even though I feel that way, God, not my will, but your will be done. hundred. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's spot on. Just as a little side note there, I remember the very first time I ever read that story and I heard about Peter cutting off the ear of the guard yeah. and I was like, dude, chill. <laughs> like, I get it. Yeah. Like, I don't want Jesus to get taken either. Like, spoilers here, but mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I yeah. just remember that shocking me yeah. as a kid. I was like, why did he cut his ear off? That's crazy. Right. It, it's but, one of those situations where then you get to see the real human side of Peter, right? Yeah, like, for real. no, I don't want this to happen. Yeah. Yeah. But ultimately, we know yeah. that without that arrest, I mean, we don't get the resurrection. Yeah, true. Um, which is what we put our faith in. So. Which I think, too, is another example of what can be oftentimes our short sightedness mm. in the face of God's plan. Mm. You know, in the moment, Peter sees the soldiers coming for Jesus to take him away. He knows yeah. what's going to happen. Right. You know, the writing's on the wall. And so his reaction is, no, I'm going to stop this. Mm-hmm. But like you said, if he stops that, what does that mean? Yeah, absolutely. You know, like that means the whole course of history has changed. Mm-hmm. It means, you know, the sacrifice is not what it has to be, you know? Yeah. And so I was there making a joke, but look at us, man. That'll preach. Yeah, that, hey, that'll, that'll preach. preach. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Eli's um, about to be preaching on Sunday morning. Oh, right? no, 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 no. Nobody wants that. <laughs> I'll stick to singing. Um, anyway, so I think another thing that we kind of approach when we're looking at our prayer life is as we step into it and, and 
we're kind of sorting our way through it. And for me, even, it, I think this is something that we can encounter a few times when we don't know where to start. Mm. Where is a good place to start? I'll, I'll even kind of reference back to what we were talking to previously. Whenever I was going through that kind of rough patch with my faith, getting back to where I was like, you know what? No, I'm not going to just ignore this. I'm not going to just step away. I'm not going to pull away from God and just like let the world happen around me. I'm going to be active and involved Mm -hmm. in my faith and in my relationship with God. But when I started trying to step back into that, it felt awkward and disjointed and it felt, you know, that's the other human side of it is, is it's almost like when you get into an argument with somebody and it's like, you're kind of both tiptoeing around the subject and you're not really sure how you want to get back into it. What would a good place to start be for maybe someone who's learning how to pray just for the first time or mm-hmm. someone who is kind of reconciling their relationship because they're really not too different in the end? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think the, the biggest advice that I can give in that is simplicity, right? Um, I, I think that we have fallen into a trap that our faith is this super complex thing that we, we're constantly have to navigate through when when the more simple we can t- we can keep it the better off we're going to be yeah. right and so i i think a lot of times you hear about prayer and everyone's like man I, I gotta have 10 15 30 minutes set aside every single day to to present my request to god to to pray and all this stuff but it's like s- start with 30 seconds yeah like you you have 30 seconds to Talk to him. Yeah. Right? Like, you don't have to make it this huge thing. And eventually, that 30 seconds turns into a minute, which turns into two minutes, turns into five, it turns into 10. Mm-hmm. And eventually, you're praying, like scripture says, like all day. Yeah. Because it's just this constant conversation, mm-hmm. right? You, you get a text from someone saying, Hey, uh, I'm going through this. Can you pray? You stop what you're doing and you pray. And, and it becomes this more fluidity. Um, and, and so I think the more simple we can we can keep it in the beginning, the better off we're going to be in the long run. For because sure. if we start with this complex thing, it's going to be really hard to maintain that, right? Uh, some, someone just talked to me about um, weightlifting, actually, about like if you keep it simple at the start, you're going to be more apt to continue to do it. But if the first two days you just beat your body down to where you are hurting and you are sore where you can barely move, odds are you're not going to want to maintain that, yeah. right? Like you're going to be like, wow, that was not fun. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, yeah that's like, really, really I don't want to do that ever again. But the same can be said for this. If you just start off with, man, I, I have to lock myself in a closet for an hour and pray. Odds are the next day you're not going to be able to maintain that. Right, yeah. and so I think the more simple we start, the the better off we're going to be in the long run. Yeah. Um, and, and another little thing that I've been doing recently, there, there's this thing called habit stacking, and what it is is you find this this habit that you do every single day. So for me, I drive to work every single day, right? So it's something that I can do where okay, I'm going to stack a habit on top of that. So every t- morning when I drive to work, I pray. Mm. And so that's become a habit for me now because I just stacked a habit on another habit. And so it becomes this thing where I- I'm in a car 90% of the time, like every day, um, and I-, I pray. Um, and it's an easy way for, for habits to form, yeah. right? Uh, showering can be another thing, you know, pray in the shower because most people shower Hopefully every day. Hopefully you're doing it most right? of the time. Yeah. 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 If not, you can talk to me and I can tell you how to shower. Quick hygiene tips. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, but yeah, I think habit stacking is another like almost like a cheat code yeah. to life, yeah. right? P- pick the things that you know you do every single day and stack a habit on top of it. That way when you're like, all right, I'm in my car, I'm going to pray. Well, and I don't think we even notice it a lot of times when we do yeah. that. I, for example, same thing, even with prayer, because obviously I have a pretty long drive into work, so mm-hmm. I don't spend the whole time praying right. usually, yeah. mostly because I get a little distracted. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so I pray on the way to work, and then a lot of times, I usually once or twice a week, um, 
I've gotten in the habit of calling my mom, mm-hmm. you know, which mm-hmm. I think she's listening. Hi, mom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, and so that, but it's the same thing. It's the same mm-hmm. communication. It's the same, like, like you said, you're just kind of putting yourself in a position to maintain mm-hmm. that relationship. And I, to go back to what you were saying earlier about working out, you know, forming those habits is it is very similar to working out in a lot of ways. You know, you start with the basics, you start small, you start with lighter weights. And so you start with smaller prayers. You start, if you can't go 30 seconds and start with God, I need you. Yeah, exactly. Like, and he knows, Yeah, he knows. Mm -hmm. It's not like he needs to have us lay it out. In fact, there's scriptural precedent for not being flowery in our words and making it this perfect yes, prayer absolutely. and, and trying to like perfect our speech when we come to God, there's scriptural mm-hmm. precedent for that. Mm-hmm. But as we begin those smaller prayers of, you know, God, I need you turns into God, I need you because right now this is happening. Mm-hmm. And then that turns into, you know, growing and growing and we're lifting yeah. heavier weights. We're, we're picking up heavier, yeah. you know, uh, stuff in our spiritual walk with God. And I, I think that the thing is, is just to make sure we're approaching it without feet like, cause it can feel daunting, mm. especially for someone like me who is, I'm very easily distracted and yeah. very, very forgetful, mm-hmm. yeah. very, very, very forgetful. Um, like embarrassingly. So a lot of times, <laughs> um, which is all the more reason why, like you said, habit stacking is important. Mm. It's incredibly important because if, if, you're like me and you don't have the ability to, or not don't have the ability, but you struggle to, to randomly say, okay, I'm going to start praying now. Because if I say, I'm just going to start praying now, a lot of times I have like a million things on my desk right now. One of those things is going to distract me. But if I'm in my car and saying, Hey, I'm not going to be doing anything else, anything else than looking forward while I'm driving. Mm -hmm. This is the time to do it. Find those times until it becomes a natural flow. I'm not sure. I don't know that we've ever really talked about this. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fortunately, I've been able to listen a little bit about what's going to happen with the prayer class. But is do you feel like there is any misconceptions we have about prayer mm, mm-hmm. in the sense of we we present our request right we we go to him in adoration confession supplication thanksgiving yeah and then we're done yeah like all right we're good check right yeah. And then we go about our day and whatever. But I think the the biggest thing that we forget is that communication is always two-sided. For sure. So if I'm the only one talking in our friendship and I never listen to you, never hear you out, you're probably going to be real upset, right? <laughs> like annoyed, bitter, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And and things aren't going to go well. Sure. Same, same is true here. Like we... We obviously need to present our request to God and go to Him with all these things, but we also have to make time to listen to Him. Just be quiet. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because I actually just fully finished this section of the class today yeah. um, about listening. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think the three areas that we forget that God speaks to us the most are silence, which is immensely uncomfortable, right? One, one of the hardest things that I, I struggle with is turning off the radio, taking out the AirPods when I'm walking, and just like being still, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And just saying, God, I am here. I, I want to hear from you speak to me. And then just sitting there. Yeah. It is so hard. But once you get in a routine and once you do that, I, I think that you'll experience things that you've never experienced before. And so silence, I think, is huge. Scripture, obviously, we forget that Scripture is God-breathed, so it is literally Him speaking to us. And so we can go to Scripture in hopes that He will speak to us. Yeah. Find some answers in Scripture. Yes. They're there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And so that's another form of listening. Like, 
present your request to God. Tell him, like, hey, I, I'm struggling with anxiety. Oh, well, I'm going to go to First Peter where it says, cast all your anxieties on him for he cares for you, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like, Scripture is a great way for that. And the third one that I think I tend to always forget is that God speaks to you through people, mm-hmm. right? I, I've There's been multiple times in my life where I'm just having the worst day possible sure and i don't i don't talk to people about it i just i'm one of those people i stuff it all down right until it boils up and then it's awful um but i've i've gotten these text messages from people who have no idea what i'm going through sure and they'll just say hey i'm praying for you today like the the lord just wanted me to reach out and say i care about you like if you need anything let me know that's awesome and it's like we forget that God is speaking to us through people too, right? Yeah. Through, through nature, like whatever it might be, God's always trying to to speak to us. Oftentimes, everything's just so loud in our lives that we forget to just stop, be still, and listen for His voice. Yeah. Let's just quiet down for a moment and look for Him. Yes. Let's try and find Him in the things, not wait. Yes. Like passively, listen passively, but listen actively. Exactly. And and seek out mm. His answers. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks again so much for taking a little bit of time. This is, uh, I think this is going to be a little bit longer. So uh, I, I talk a lot. That, that's on me. I think the first time I preached in Maysville, I went like 45 minutes and people were like, oh my gosh, get this man off the stage. Thanks so much for, for doing this. And, and I always enjoy talking to you about kind of this deeper stuff, yeah. but. the journey podcast if if you go to cross point we just thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to listen to us and if you don't go to cross point well we're glad you happen to stumble upon us here and we hope you join us next time thanks so much